Okay, I'm going to change my voice. For those of you who are confused, I've gone over Proverbs 30, 1 through 4. The first section is about wind, and I went over all the verses except for this last one right here, Jeremiah 23, 19. See, the storm of the Lord will burst out in wrath, a whirlwind swirling down on the heads of the wicked. So when Christ says you'll see him at the right hand of power, at the right hand of the mighty one, coming on the clouds of heaven in Mark or Matthew or whatever these scriptures are, okay, he's referring to the storm of the Lord, right? He's on the clouds of heaven, right? And there's hell to pay. They're actually dark clouds, okay? We see that in Psalm 18:9, right? Dark clouds were under his feet, okay? Out of the brightness of his presence, clouds advanced. He made darkness his covering, his canopy around him, the dark rain clouds of the sky. So they're dark clouds. Okay, there's hailstones, right? Out of the brightness of his presence, clouds advanced with hailstones and bolts of lightning. So God with me, this is my soul at his right hand, my soul that can't be touched, God that can't be touched. Okay. Coming on the clouds of heaven figuratively, okay, which is righteousness, justice, the spirit of God in a particular uh, description and particular characteristics emphasized. That's why the Spirit of God is a consuming fire. It's said to be the living water, okay, the bread of life, so on and so forth. This is a particular explanation that emphasizes martial arts, you know, God's divine monotheistic royal African falcon martial arts to the extreme, okay? So in the video leading up to this, um, I explained pretty thoroughly how, what, what the wind is, okay, and how God chooses, uh, chooses the offspring of Cush, right, Ham begot Cush, Cush begot Nimrod to punish the Jews, right, Isaiah 18, where it couples with Jeremiah 5, okay, of people whose language you do not know, whose speech you do not understand, their quivers are like an open grave, all of them are mighty warriors, this is kind of referring to the ultimate end, not the Babylonian captivity, but the ultimate end of the Jews um, and the rest of the world uh, by the hand, by, what do you mean, by the hand of God, which is in the spirit of Cush. And some of you say, well, no, that's not how it goes. Then why did Jesus say to the Jews, the kingdom of heaven will be taken away from you and given to a people who will perform its works? Why in Galatians 3.28, okay, it says, there's no neither Jew nor Gentile. You're all one in Christ Jesus. Galatians 4 says the Jerusalem in the sky, okay. And Jesus says the flesh means nothing. Jesus and John the Baptist and so on and so forth, uh, they say something along the lines of the Jews go on about their endless genealogy and miss the point, right? And they miss the finer lessons in life, okay? Mere human rules, customs, and traditions. They miss the finer points, uh, justice, faithfulness, and mercy where God's children are concerned, okay? So that was that and the wind part. Now let's discuss the water part in this second section. Okay, I'm just going to go over the wind and the water. And, and section 3 will be zeal and supporting scriptures. Then I'll go to Isaiah 27 through 30 and really overkill that this has to be the martial art war spirit. So that's why this series is going to take on, you know, it's going to drag on a little bit. And a lot of you, you know, you can see that it's a lot easier for me to explain to you in terms of martial arts principles and the history of my, my lineage and so on and so forth than it is to explain in this long, drawn-out way. The Bible is by Baal. Is it confusing? Yes. Is Baal a deity of confusion, storms, rape, sailors, merchants? Yes. So the Bible is by the nation that killed Jesus, who worshipped Jupiter, whose Greek form is Zeus, and whose Middle Eastern form is Baal, a.k.a. Baal. Okay, so it's exactly what you'd expect. And does the Bible re confirm this? Yes. When it says, narrow is the way, that leads to life and why it is the way to lead to destruction. Part of the reason why they tell the truth about certain things anyway is because they want someone like me to be forced to use this Bible uh, to explain things because it's confusing. And they overkill that with people insisting on say, things like saying things like, show me that in the Bible. Okay, so again, remember they're changing my voice. Now, as we see the scripture itself, it says, who has gone up to heaven and come down? Whose hands have gathered up the wind? Who has wrapped up the waters in a cloak? Okay. And thus, by doing these things, has established all the ends of his, the earth. What is his name and what is the name of his son? So, his son. So, you know, in terms of being a warrior, there's older guys who sit down who might not go to war. And they send their sons out to battle. So, the son is like the warrior hand, the right hand of God. Okay. So, we see in Proverbs 16, 12. 
Kings detest wrongdoing, for a throne is established in righteousness. Kings take pleasure in honest lips. They value the one who speaks what is right. A king's wrath is a messenger of death, but the wise will appease it. In verse 15, okay, so 12 through 15, verse 15, when a king's face brightens, it means life. His favor is like a rain cloud in spring. His favor is a rain cloud. My favor is a rain cloud in spring. Okay, those who do not obey God through me and, and invoke my wrath, especially if they zap my brain and keep me from expressing anger the way I want to express it, okay, they, they've brought spiritual death on themselves and their offspring. And their own book says that. So we see in verse uh, 16, how much better to get wisdom than gold, to get insight rather than silver. It says, don't cheat this guy of his right to lead. Get the knowledge of God by obeying this guy, okay? Verse 17, the highway of the upright avoids evil. Those who guard their ways preserve their lives. Okay, so the highway of the upright, it goes up to heaven, right? Those who choose money and ill-gotten gains and cheating me on my right to lead, they go down to the realm of the dead. Pretty straightforward, right? Watch this part again if you if you need to go over it again. And read, uh, open your Bibles, New Living Translation, Proverbs 16, 12 through 18. 18. Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. Okay, going down to verse 22. Prudence is a fountain of life to the prudent, but folly brings punishment to fools. So again, pride, they're too proud to obey God through me, okay? Because it says a king, a king's to test wrongdoing, for a throne is established in righteousness. A throne is established in righteousness. New Living, uh, 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 new Living Translation, so that's New International National Version, excuse me, and New Living Translation, it says, is established in justice. Okay, you see how that works? Now, we see, going back to 15, when a king's face brightens, it means life, his favor is like a rain cloud in spring. Then it goes down to verse 22, prudence is a fountain of life to the prudent, but folly brings punishment to fools. Those who scramble to do God's work, right, they, they go out of their way to meticulously obey God. That's why... I'm making these videos even though I'm fumed, even though they're making it nearly impossible for me to make these videos because God's work is to proceed. It's like Martin Luther King said, if you can't fly, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you got to keep on moving forward, right? Jesus carrying the cross, right? He's moving forward in God's plan, carrying the cross. Say, pick up your cross and follow me, even if you're persecuted, okay? So that's part of prudence. So some people say, well, well how come you're doing it so sloppy? Because part of being a Christian is being persecuted. Okay, all who wish to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, is what the Bible says. Okay. Let's see if this bird stopped chirping so I can, uh, he's still chirping. And I'm being fumed, it's kind of hot in the car. Bear with me. Um, uh, let's excuse the background noise. Proverbs 18.3. When wickedness comes, so does contempt, and with shame comes reproach. The, mouths of the, the, the words of the mouth are deep waters, but the fountain of wisdom is a rushing stream. It is not good to be partial to the wicked and so to deprive the innocent of justice. So the rushing stream of the justice and righteousness from God, we see in Revelation where it says the sounds of rushing waters. This is the sound of those running to obey God's command, right? The Messiah is waging war, spiritual war against the world. Okay, I'm the gate, the floodgate, and right now they're being flooded, right? Their, their life essence is being sucked out of them and their, and, and their DNA and, and their technology can't change that because it, God is the one who refreshes the rain from heaven, not the rain from scientists who worship the devil and Luciferian sex cults. So their life essence is being sucked out. The world's becoming the realm of the dead. We see that in Revelation where they pull the bores, excuse me, the, the bowls of God's wrath, right? The cup of God's wrath. It's, it's like a, it's like a witch's brew, so to speak, without being a witch, right? And it's changing the world. And we see these scientists changing people and making gender neutral people and racist conservatives think that somehow because they have a less of a dose of it, that they're not being made evil, but that ill-gotten gains take away, takes away your life. Okay. Proverbs 119, such are the paths of those who go after ill-gotten gains. It takes away the life of all who get it. We see all these conservatives with their pickup trucks, with their skulls, skull and bones, right? They're the walking dead as well. And more so than the liberals because they are closer to the core of injustice which is white Jewish and LGBT supremacy on a corporate kind of big money uh, level. Okay, so we look at the exact constituents of the liberals, generally speaking, right? They are minorities in the more, and disproportionately victims where the conservatives are the white and Jewish and LGBT oppressors kind of rich elite cracking down on them in terms of their, their common follower, not necessarily cor corporate, all, corp all rich people are scum, okay? But look at the average members of their party. Yeah, but they're all going to hell, so what does it really matter, right? So we see um, Proverbs 21.1. In the Lord's hand, the king's heart is a stream of water that he channels toward all who please him. People may think their Lord, excuse me, people may think their own ways are right, 
but the Lord weighs the heart. So in the Lord's hand, the king's heart is a stream of water. And if that stream of water isn't in your heart, if you're not obeying God, if you're not receiving that water, that living water of God through me, okay, then you're going to hell. Because the Lord weighs and saves, you know, the answer is ons where, right? Where is the one who he put his spirit on, right? The answer, alpha and uh, alphas and where? Where is the alpha? Where is his son? This is his son who he's pleased with. It's me, okay? Proverbs 27, 15, a quarrelsome wife is like the dripping of a leaky roof in a rainstorm, okay? It goes down to verse 19, water reflect, as water reflects the face, so one's life reflects the heart. So how did you live your life? Did you obey the king? Okay, are you a quarrelsome wife? Okay, and you're like a dripping of a leaky roof in a rainstorm. So as the rainstorm comes, you're, you know, you're like your spirit, your actual wife, your city, your people, your, your grouping, your religious grouping, your faction, your denomination. It's being, you know, it's being trampled because you're quarreling with the king, which is quarreling with God. He who sees the son sees the father. He who quarrels with the son quarrels with the father. I am the gate. I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. You see what I'm saying? So Proverbs 28, 1, the wicked flee, though no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as lion. Were you brave enough to obey God through me? Verse 3, a ruler who oppresses the poor is like a driving rain that leaves no crops. If you oppress the righteous, okay, you're leaving no crops. Your offspring are wicked. Anything that's cultivated, any children, any newborns, any child, any big buddy, your child is born in the last five years, we'll say, throw a number out there, okay, and, and onward is not going to have the spirit of God. Because you're a, a ruler who presses the poor is like a driving rain that leaves no crops. You even oppress God's son. And and I didn't have a suitable helper. Okay, so I don't have a woman. I don't live on my own. Okay, I don't have a suitable, attractive woman that I deem worthy. Okay, so you've oppressed the poor. You've even oppressed the gate. And as you wage war against God by waging war against his gate, his son. Okay, you're not going to have any children that go to heaven. All funerals are going to be a mock ritual, all weddings, a mock ritual, all dating, all lifestyles. I mean, it was dumber than dirt. You know, it's some jackal face stupidity that caused these people to do this. It's some Prince Humperdinck arrogance that caused these people to do this. It's military control freak lunacy that caused these people to do this. It's LGBT serial killer, Dahmer, Night Stalker, Gacy, stupidity, Aquino, Shrek, Anton LaVey type of dummies. They caused them to be so rock and roll star type of stupid that they would persecute God's son himself. All right. You know, God's actual son. Me. Isaiah 45, 8. You heavens above rain down my righteousness. Let the clouds shower it down. Let the earth open wide. Let salvation spring up. Let righteousness flourish with it. I, the Lord, have created. So again, Jesus said in the New Testament, he said, you'll see me coming on the clouds of heaven at the right hand of power, right? So he's raining down righteousness. What happens when righteousness comes into contact with the wicked who didn't keep their lamps burning, who didn't obey God, these rebels, so on and so forth? They're destroyed. They're flooded. They go down to the realm of the dead. They're marshaled into the realm of the dead. They're moved by the super nature of the situation that is obscure to the stupid and is painfully obvious to the wise and people who aren't complete idiots somewhat see what's going on and so on and so forth. Revelation 19, 6, Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roaring of rushing waters and like the loud peals of thunder, shouting hallelujah for our Lord God Almighty, Almighty reigns. Okay, so going back to... Um, going back to what I was mentioning before about um, the waters... Okay, that refers to Revelation. Oh, here we go. So it's Proverbs 18:4. The mouth of the words of the mouth are deep waters, but the fountain of wisdom is a rushing stream. So the actions, right? In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. The actions of God are also God. Okay? So the actions of God are deep waters, but the fountain of wisdom is a rushing stream. The action of rebels is muddy and polluted and toxic waters. It's the like lava from hell. It, it is despicable. Okay? So what is this rushing water? Uh, you know, that we see in Revelation 19.6, 19, peals of thunder, right? It's the, the kind of the storm of the Lord, right? The rushing waters. It is uh, uh, the words of the mouth. It is the actions of God, the deep and profound actions of God and the wisdom of God and the spirit of righteousness and justice, what have you. Okay, so let's go ahead and end it there. And the next video, we'll get into Jeremiah 47. We got a lot of stuff to go over, so 